Okay, before we start, I just want to let you know that this uh, video will just show off all the settings of fiber mesh and you don't have to watch it unless you want to sort of understand what each slider does. Uh, I don't go in super deep with everything, but it takes a while. Maybe you want to watch this at the end, who knows? Okay, let's talk about fiber mesh for a second. Uh, maybe you have worked with um, fur in another 3D application like Maya or 3ds Max, I don't know. Um, maybe you used shave and a haircut. And basically what you need to understand in fiber mesh is that it's procedural to a certain extent. And when you hit accept, you lose sort of all the um, settings. After the accept part, you can only change the sh uh, shape and the length and the width of the hair. So you can't change um, density or stuff like that. But it's you get a huge amount of control that you don't have in other applications. And it's really fast to um, to create and you see every hair. It's not like you have to render every 10 seconds for you know, seeing how it will end up. Uh, so I think fiber mesh is just awesome. Um, so we're going to try some of the settings, but not on this character. I just want it to be a flat plane so we see what happens. So we go up here and choose the plane 3D, make it into a poly mesh. And um, fiber mesh grows by masking. So you just hit control and mask off an area and then you just hold control and blur it slightly by control clicking on the mask. So let's go down to fiber mesh and hit preview. Okay, there we go. Max fibers, that is the number of fibers that is created by a thousand. So uh, if I press one, it would be 1000. And one thing about ZBrush generally is that, you know, there's a lot of settings here and they got this fantastic system of just understanding what they, what each uh, slider does. You just hit control and hover over the settings and there's a tiny bit of text that describes what happens. So I'm not going to go over all of these in detail. I'm just going to you know, talk about them quite generally and talk about which settings I find really important when doing fur. So uh, Max Fibers, that's a an important one. And one thing to know is that this works very much together with coverage and coverage is basically it says how wide the fur should be but you can see here that when I increase this but decreases my max fibers it's sort of they get wider they you know they sort of block out the same amount of the original mesh as when I increase. So it's basically just a, um, together they make a, create a feeling of density of the fur or fiber mesh. So that's good to know. Um, by mask and by area, if you have these settings work together, if you have by mask is basically if you get lower amount of masking you get smaller fiber mesh and it gets you know not as dense uh, as you can see here uh, but by area then it's decided by you know the size of the polygons that the fiber mesh grow from and here each each polygon is the same size so you don't get any variation really. 
Um, let's see, length. Yeah, let's see. Big one. It makes the fire mesh longer. Who could have expected that? Okay, and you got width profile. Um, it's basically, if you do like this, you will get, if we're talking grass, you would get a, a wider grass in the middle and then it thins out at the end. Um, I just like to leave it as it is. Unless you're doing some kind of you know, strange plant, I don't know. Um, and this works together with um, scale root and scale tip. It sort of um, scale roots, widens the roots, and scale tip scales down or up the tip. So generally, um, I think it's good to have a smaller tip size when you're doing fur. And it's, it's also nice to have a root that is sort of bigger than the tip because you get a more sense of you know, uh, density of the fur. To see what Slim does, you have to go down to uh, Profile. Just increase that to four. And this is, I would only change this to show off what Slim does. I also have to just crank down Max Fiber so you can see. Yeah. So you can see now they're sort of have the same length on each side, but Slim makes them flatter on one or the other side. Never used that. I have never used it. Okay, um, Revolve. If you want curly hair, um, that's something you can do. Just gonna decrease that. Um, but if you would start grooming this, you would lose the uh, Revolveness because of the grooming, but you can always get it back with, you know, moving stuff around with brushes twist then it's sort of the same but um on the fiber's own axis gravity gravity you know pulls the uh, fiber mesh down or the tip but it's also important to know that it's dependent on the camera angle so if i do this and pull the gravity it only pulls down Oops. Pulls down this way. So H tangent and V tangent. It's like if I pull H tangent, yeah, the hairs will go in this direction. And H, sorry, V tangent would go in this direction. So clumps. What it does is each fiber will clump together with the other fibers coming from the same polygon. So you can see that from each polygon they clump together. I don't use this much, much because you can use um, brushes later on to uh, clump stuff together. And uh, once, if we would do clumping here and then start grooming, it would also disappear. Base color, tip color, nothing weird about that. You can always put in a texture if you like to. I don't. Uh, because if you put in a texture, you can't poly paint it later on. Segments, that's, that's really important. Now we have three segments and that means you have two loops going through each poly mesh. So if you just do, you know, normal kind of hair that is, you know, not like this all scraggly, it's fine. But if you want scraggly hair, you have to increase the segments. 
And also if you're doing like a character with long flowing hair, yeah, you might want to increase those segments. Fast preview, that's, it's really good if you're doing fur or hair because the uh, ZBrush doesn't have to render out the actual polygons. It just draws the curves and uh, hair is generally really thin. So, I mean, when it's really dense, you will, yeah, I usually use this. When you have fast preview on, you can drag the slider and it determines how many uh, in percent, how many fiber mesh that will show in the viewport and also how many will be exported as curves. After that you get tip and root anisotropy and it basically uh, controls how specularities spread along the fiber. Uh, subdivisions, that is sort of a post-rendering process. Um, if you go down like this, it will have less subdivisions. And if you go up to one, it, it, it divides at render time. And you can also control size here. Usually have that at two. You can always control the radius as well. Oh, that's really thin. 0.5 and three. So that's good. <clears throat> that basically um, concludes the settings.